welcome to our spectacular special, where we're here to make a chemical concoction taste great. Let's make sugar cookies, pumpkin patch sugar cookies. To make our chemical concoctions work, we need to first set the oven to 350 degrees. Make sure you always have parental assistance when doing this. You don't want to end up like the witch from Hansel and Gretel now, do you? Step two, prepare your baking tray and some parchment paper to go on top. Three, we need to combine all our wet ingredients. First, grab some butter. Butter is a fat. It's solid like this at room temperature, but once we melt it, it'll become liquid. That's a physical change. Matter is defined as anything that has mass and takes up space. Therefore, matter is all around you. I just mentioned how our butter was in two different states of matter before and after melting it. Before melting, it was a solid with particles tightly packed together. After melting, the butter became a liquid where the particles became more loosely packed together and the stick of butter no longer held its shape. There is one more state of matter I didn't mention. Do you know what it is? The third state of matter is gas. The particles in a gas are the most loosely packed together. We need four tablespoons of melted butter. One, two, three, and four. Now let's melt it. Try 20 seconds first, but watch it carefully. You don't want it to over bubble. Next, we need to add the egg yolk. You're gonna need an egg separator. We need to add sucrose to make our cookies sweet. That's just sugar. Sucrose is the simple sugar made from glucose and fructose, which are made up of carbon atoms, oxygen atoms, and hydrogen atoms. Remember, atoms are the building blocks of matter. Take one third cup of your sugar and add it to your mixer. a teaspoon of vanilla. Now we need to stir all our wet ingredients very well. Make sure they're fully combined. It's working, it's working. Our ingredients are combining. Now we need to sprinkle our dry ingredients over top of the wet ones. We need a half a cup of flour. Flour's main component is starch. You can find starch in lots of things, like potatoes. But there's more. We need more starch. Add two more tablespoons of flour. Approximately how many tablespoons are there in one cup? If there are 15 milliliters in one tablespoon and 250 milliliters in one cup, how many tablespoons will fit inside one cup? 
Let's use long division to solve this. Step 1 is division. 15 can't fit into 2, so we need to put it into 25 instead. 15 can go into 25 one time. Step 2 is multiplication. 15 times 1 is 15. Step 3 is subtraction. 25 minus 15 is 10. Step 4, bring the next number down. Now we repeat our steps. There are no more numbers to bring down, so the remainder is 10. Therefore, approximately 16 tablespoons equal to 1 cup. Add a quarter of a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate. That's baking soda. An eighth of a teaspoon of salt, sodium chloride crystals. How does salt get its crystal structure? Well, sodium chloride molecules are tightly packed together over and over and over. Stir all your ingredients together until they are just combined. Don't over stir. When you over stir, too much air enters the dough. And then when you place them in the oven, they'll rise and fall. You don't want to eat a hockey puck, do you? If your dough feels too wet, add some more flour. Start by separating your dough into two balls. Take a pinch from one of the balls. Now add some green food coloring to the pinch that we took. This is going to be the stem for our pumpkins. Mix it in well. You can always add more food coloring if you want a more vibrant color. Now take the dough ball that we took the pinch from and add red and yellow food coloring to make orange. Take your green dough and roll it into a long snake. Do the same with your orange dough. Roll it out till it's a long snake, but not quite so thin. Place your green dough on top of your orange dough. Now take your plain dough and spread it all out till it's flat. Place your orange and green dough on top of your plain dough. Fold your plain dough over top of your orange and green dough covering it completely. Give your dough blob a little bit of a roll to make it more round. With parental supervision, use a knife to cut your dough into approximately 1 inch slices. When you're done cutting all your slices, place your dough onto your cookie sheet. Oven mitts on.
heating the sodium bicarbonate or our baking soda causes it to decompose into carbon dioxide and water. The CO2 gas and water vapor cause bubbles which makes our cookies rise. This is a chemical change. So what exactly is a chemical change? Is it A, when atoms are rearranged to produce a new substance? Or B, when a substance changes color, shape, size, or state of matter but does not produce a new substance? substance? The answer is A. Recall our chemical change. Remember, the baking soda was decomposed. You can see here that the atoms have been rearranged into new substances, like water and carbon dioxide gas. Our chemical concoction worked. Look! Oh, smell that. Mmm, taste that. Mmm, mm, that's good. Mmm, I think I can have some more. Mm. Mm. Thank you for joining iStan. Have a happy Halloween. I'm Igor, and I'm Igor to learn some more STEM. Mm, you must be too. So subscribe.